This episode of the Wedding Film School Show is brought to you by Musicbed, the best music licensing platform for wedding filmmakers. Head over to themusicbed.com and enter our code WFS on checkout to get a free month on your annual wedding subscription. Now, on to the show. Three ways to crush your back, three and a half ways, actually. Yes. To crush your backlog. The couple was at their wedding, believe it or not. Yeah. They know that they didn't spend $200,000 on florals. Don't be afraid to deliver the wedding the way that it is. Spending more time on it isn't necessarily going to make it any better. So like, you know what the good story is. Everyone works better when they have boundaries and even if artificial, things that can create urgency. Some of you guys are late now. You don't even know it. I might as well just write you a letter to open in December to talk about how you're going to have 15 weddings in backlog and you have no solution. I'm going to get right in my bag. Uh, why you going to try to get mad? Uh, everybody want to keep up. Uh, don't you know I'm too fast? Uh, I'm going to zip, zip right past. Uh, drip, drip all on my swag. Uh, Hello and welcome to the Wedding Film School Show. My name is Jared. Welcome to another great episode. I am here with my longtime friend and business partner and uh, overall, excellent filmmaker. Excellent filmmaker. Yeah, uh, extraordinary. Jason McCutcheon. Hey, man. Um, How are you feeling today? Uh, I'm kind of irritated today. I know you are. <laughs> I've just had so we that, got a like, spicy meatball of an episode this this time around. We're like we're like we're in the space now ish. Um, still kind of doing some decorating and like right. setting up stuff. But this is actually the space that we're gonna do the podcast. Yes, week yes. after week after week. This is your back black backdrop for here. now. For now, we're gonna add things to it, but It'll we're cool in looking. finally. But all this stuff, like we still have to run a business and all the things that we have to do besides move in. So, you know, everything's like superheated. You have to have every conversation in like one second versus <clears throat> you can just be like, doo, 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 doo. Yeah. so and definitely instead of setting up the, this whole setup in a different room every single week, because they're doing the carpet or roofing, that will be the future. Yes. That'll be my future, but that's not yes. my reality currently. Yeah. Well, I mean, we're, we're almost there. So, so anyway, but excited to talk today. I, it's a topic that I, you know, like a lot of times I'm like, I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm not a great filmmaker, blah, blah, blah. The one thing I'm pretty good about is coming up with processes that make filmmaking possible. Right. And it's the one thing you're good it's at. It's the one thing I'm good at. And when I think through like other people, I remember asking a question one time. Um, do we even give the topic of this podcast yet? No, you haven't. I'm oh, waiting for it right okay. now. What so are we talking about? The topic of the podcast is called how to crush your backlog. And we're going to give you three ways to crush your back, three and a half ways actually Yes. to crush your backlog. And, and the reason I was interesting to me is like, I remember, I mean, besides the fact that people constantly talk about this, right? I remember someone saying something to me one time, like I remember asking a question, like how long do you typically spend? And like, I mean, the answers are so varied, right? People are spending anywhere from like 10 to 50 hours on a wedding film. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and I think that's partly because like people have very different products they do. And so they take a different amount of time. So there's some tolerances there. But I think a lot of it is like people literally like we don't have an our industry lacks standardization. Yes. And, that's and, one of the points of this podcast, by the way. Yes. Is like, what are we all making and what is and like people refer to things and do things a different way. But like there's a reason why most people, no matter what they talk about their product, looks one of three ways. So there is a standardization because there's only so many ways you can tell that story. I think the weddings themselves are basically standardized. Right. And so our language isn't standardized and our processes aren't standardized. And I would, I don't know what the numbers are, but I'm sure most of the people in our industry are new. I think I've heard something like after the first year, like 80% of the people who start quit. So when you imagine an industry with that many new people, right? And they're all popping in the boards and you know how the internet works, right? Somebody could be doing a wedding filmmaking for six months and they're gonna talk like a 10 year vet. And those people are weighing in, giving all the info. Oh yeah, that's what I do. This is what you should be doing. And that guy got in my way, look at this. Oh yeah, me every weekend. Like, why are you complaining about that? Like, and so I think all of that comes together to mean like a lot of people have problems with their backlog and a lot of people don't know why. And they and they like they think it's like part of the job actually. Like, well, yeah, 
What about your backlog, Jared? Oh, it's so terrible. Me also. We all have terrible backlogs, right, guys? High five. And it's like, no, actually, that isn't how everyone is. And it isn't how you have to be. You can have no backlog. <laughs> this is not a plug for no backlog, but we, we are partners with them. And so if you need editing, you can get it. Yeah. And, and to your point about that classic uh, Facebook posts, right? Uh, uh, people asking like, how long does a film actually take for people to edit? And it is all over the place. It's anywhere, you know, like you said, 10 hours to 50 hours. Yeah. Like that's crazy. Like there's five times the difference. Yeah. And, and you could look at, I, I promise you in a lot of cases, you could look at the end result and they're exactly the same. Or so the guy why? with 50 hours was worse than the guy with 10. Right. Like, right. You know, so, so, you know, I think we as creatives fall into this trap because, you know, it's that classic, like, the artist doesn't really know when the art is done until oh, yeah. they, they they essentially just dick around long enough that they're like, I feel like I've put enough of my effort. Well, it's like personal satisfaction, to, right? To to close this project out, and and that's a trap, right? Um, and and I think a, a big part of becoming a mature professional creative is saying it's done when it meets these requirements, and you know it's it's a professional looking thing. So well, people always say it's done when it's done, right? And it's like, well, what does that mean? Like define done. Right. Like what's done when you feel good about it. Like, yep. This is the, the whole issue that and we've shot enough weddings now where we, we have the virtue of having such a large sample size that we kind of know how good a wedding can be based on a lot of factors. Yeah. When you're just looking through the footage, you're like, this is the kind of film. It's literally shooting the wedding. Yeah. Shooting yep. the wedding. You're like, meh or wow. Yeah. And, and, and like, I know for a lot of people, they're getting started. They don't know. Maybe we could do a podcast on that someday. I don't know if it's a banger. But, like, at the end of the day, like, they don't know. And they think, oh, this wedding sucks, or I don't like this couple, or I'm not feeling this edit. Whatever it is that they feel, if I edit it longer, I can fix that. Mm -hmm. Talk. A, we should talk a little bit about that fear, because I think a lot of people, when, especially when you get a bad wedding, and you're like, how am I going to make this anything? Sometimes you just have to accept this isn't, going to be exactly what I want it to be. It's not going to be this film that I'm going to submit to WPPI or whatever. This is just a film I have to get out and get out of my life. And and the couple will be understanding. So you can like, work on this, the next thing. There's this fear of like, well, the couple isn't going to be satisfied. When like, honestly, most of the time, the couple was at their wedding, believe it or not. Yeah. They know that they didn't spend $200,000 on florals <laughs> like, or that they decided not to do something that you yeah. think is critical to your films, like have certain speeches. Yeah. They have a certain standard of like, Hey, this is the wedding that we threw. We were there. We know what it was. And, and we like, liked it. And, and more than likely, whatever you're able to produce of that film is going to be way better. <laughs> and the what understanding it was we the start with, and I have not been proven wrong on this so far is that people, I'll try me, Jason, people like themselves. No, it's, they, that's true. They, <laughs> yeah, that's true. They booked a film. They like themselves yeah. and they like the people they invited for the most part. Unless you get the random, that girl slept with my grooms in and take her out of my film. Right, like, right. Like, but every so often, but in general, they like the people they invited and they like the things they did at the wedding. Yep. And so you, everything you put, they're going to like. Yeah. They're super biased to like their film. I told someone the other day, I said, you need to stop thinking about your films this way. Mm -hmm. Your client is predisposed to like the film. Yes. Because it's them. It's a very emotionally charged day, positively, um, for the most part. And they purchased you, and people don't like feeling stupid. They don't like buying things and then being like, I'm an idiot. I don't have good judgment. I picked a dumb filmmaker. No, they want to tell their friends they got the best filmmaker, a great filmmaker, right. all these things. And like... So they're predisposed for all this, which means if you're not feeling it, but you make sure it represents them, they'll probably like it. Right. Right. They'll probably love it. The thing and then about, I guess like the question is, what's your job? Right. The, the thing about video, and I don't think we think about what we do in this context enough, is um, video connects memory, right? Mm -hmm. Like more than photography does. When you look at a photo, you're like, wow, that's surreal looking. It's like in this field, it looks epic, but it's just a frame. It doesn't make you feel nostalgic in most cases. At least that, that's the way it is for me. I look at, least, at a photo and I'm like- There are some photographers that can do that for me, but in general. Yeah, maybe. But when I'm watching the raw footage of my wedding, it 
connects me back to that moment in time when I was like, you know what? I was feeling this way on my wedding day. I was feeling anxious due to the weather. I was feeling sentimental towards my parents. I was feeling love towards my wife. Like in that moment, like the first look stuff when I was like sobbing at our first look, like I'm like, man, it ties memories that I had that weren't shot um, back to me. Like well, it, even like, look how we've changed. Right, right. Like, I don't even talk the same way. My voice is different. Like, yes. Everything about the thing, like, what you're doing is inherently meaningful as a wedding filmmaker. Yep. And so you don't need to insert meaning right. by making it better and better and better. Like, right. It has meaning inherently. It is special inherently. Yep. So you do the best you can. Yep. And like be, and like a good editor understands where the limitations are. And I do understand if you're new, part of the process is learning where the limitations are. And so if you're hearing this and you're like, well, I'm new and it's still taking me 40 hours, that's fine. Mm -hmm. You won't always take you 40 and that's, but what I hope I can talk you out of is that it's a feature, not a bug. Mm -hmm. That everything should take forever and right. unknowable processes. And yeah. You'll hear some people talk who are great artists and they have these terrible processes. And then other people go, oh, this person does it this way. It's so great because, and that's how they get their great films. I'm like, no, they're just uh, like elite. They're just artistically like another level. It's not a pattern. Right. Like, and, and I would hope you would hear this and go like, okay, how do I not, what are some patterns I can start implying? And if you're a vet and you've been doing it a long time, hopefully you can at least have a little refresher and maybe have a little honesty about why it's taking you so long. Yeah. So. Yeah. And, and I guess my point with, uh, with saying all of this and getting a little bit off topic is like, you know, um, don't be afraid of, of delivering a film the way it is, you know, don't feel like you have to make this uh, crummy <laughs> hotel wedding, you know, conference room wedding, uh, into, you know, a, a million dollar looking wedding, like, cause it's not going to be the case. Like, don't be afraid to deliver the wedding the way that it is spending more time on it. Isn't necessarily going to make it any better. So bang out the parts. Like, you know what the good story is or the bad story is, or just the acceptable, just story. deliver it. Well, and usually a lot of times things that people try to fix in editing should be fixed in shooting. Yep. So it's like shoot sure. the next wedding better. Like you should yeah. like if you are shooting like a lame wedding and you're like oh, I should have shot more handheld, give it a little, a little more life. Mm -hmm. Do that next time. You can't go you can't in post fix it. No. Yep. So it's like don't fix things in post that you should have fixed in, in production. Shooting. Totally. But yep. that's a that's a free tip. Yeah. <laughs> shoot better, you'll edit faster. <laughs> So do you want to dive in? Let's dive yeah. into, you know, the three and a half ways to crush your backlog. Um, and, and this is a list that we took a long time to, uh, <laughs> to curate. Not really. Uh, we, I we mean, went it was a, little a bit. solid 40 minutes. So, so the three and a half ways, um, and we'll just bang them out really quick, and then we'll go back and we'll dive into each of them. Uh, first one is go to work. Second one is create a process. Uh, third one is have the right tools and, and the little half little freebie, uh, at the end, save that just, for the end. Don't get, okay. Don't okay. We, yeah, we'll save, we'll save the half Stick around to the end of the episode here. The real best tip. <laughs> That's when you'll get your money's worth, uh, is, is at the end of the episode. But, um, so the first one, go to work. And this is something that uh, I'll let you kind of dive in first, because it's something that I think you always say to every single person who has, you know, coaching session with you is uh, just go to work. So well, what do one of the first things I ask people is like, what is your schedule? When they say they have an issue and almost inevitably, the person will say something around the lines of like, well, and some of it are, I'm not mocking people because some of it are legitimate, but it still doesn't mean just because you have a legitimate excuse doesn't mean it's not a problem. And so they'll say something like, well, I have a hard time because I'm watching the kids and I have another job and I get home, I want to be present. So I'm doing X, Y, and Z. I'm working whenever I get time. Um, and that's, that's one type of person. And then another type of person is maybe full time, you know, and they're kind of like, oh, when I get inspired or like the, the way they talk about it is like, it's like a good thing that they're undisciplined. And that's part of their process right. is being undisciplined. The, the Pablo Picasso syndrome. Yeah. 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 And it's like, you're not Pablo Picasso. though. Otherwise you <laughs> wouldn't be calling me for a coaching session. <laughs> totally. <laughs> it's like, and so like, and by the way, who is like, that's not the standard is being Pablo Picasso or, or in some amazing, the best f filmmaker. You shouldn't feel pressure to be Pablo Picasso. You should be feel pressure to finish your job on time. 
you don't work for me, a wedding filmmaker, you work for a client. And so when you talk to people and you say to them like, what's your schedule and they don't have one, that's one of the first things I, I tell people is like, you need a routine. Like, I don't, all the right brain, left brain debates you could ever have about being creative versus analytical, it doesn't matter. Everyone works better when they have boundaries and even if artificial, things that can create urgency. When you, if you say to someone like, there's a reason why people are late now. Some of you guys are late now. You don't even know it. You're dead in the water. With you already have such a bad process. You might as well just I might as well just write you a letter to open in December to talk about how you're going to have 15 weddings in backlog and you have no solution. Yeah, you should pre-write and and pre-date and schedule your Facebook post about how backed up you are and how all the outsourcing companies are backed up and you can't get in because you're already behind. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're already behind. And, and like, because I can already tell you, you didn't budget the hours throughout your normal year that by the time, like it takes what it takes to finish the film. I think it should take 12 to 18 hours yeah. to finish a five to seven minute highlight film. Um, maybe a little more, maybe a little less, but around there, yeah. you know, so imagine scope creep. Let's give them even 10% scope creep. So you're at 20%, 22%, 22 hours. And okay, you have 25 films. What does that equal? Like 300 hours ish of editing? Did you budget 300 hours? Like, is your current plan giving you the 300 hours it needs to actually edit the films? It's not, it's just math. Mm -hmm. And people don't like, they don't like math because math is not creative. But it's like, within the constructs of creativity are just real things we have to deal with. And some of them are time. Mm -hmm. Time is a reality of being a human being. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If we're, if we're talking about urgency, I mean, my question to, to the listener would be like, how much busy are you this year than last year? Are you busier than the last year? Um, most of us would say yes. I think 2022 That's is our hope for you. There, there are more weddings this year than there have been in a single year since 1987. So just in general, there are more weddings this year than there ever have ever been. So there are more wedding filmmakers and in general, from the conversations I've had with all of our wedding filmmaker friends, it's a busy year for most people. Um, what have you done to address the issues that you had last year in your backlog? Like, uh, if anything, or are you just like, I'm better now, so I'll, I'll be faster. And to me, that's probably not a very good um, reason for why you're, you won't be super backlogged in January of 2023, February, March. Well, like everybody has a budget. Right. Right. And so you, you probably have haven't done the hours like you, you're, you're mentioning. not budgeting your time. Yes. And so the best way to budget your time is to have a routine. Yeah. It's yeah. like, and so and like, whatever, there are other ways to do it. I'm just telling you the easiest and most dependable way. Yeah. The most dependable way, because humans need continuity. Just get up, go to work. I, I'm glad you mentioned here because it is really important because everyone who's listening to the podcast, we're, we're at different stages of our businesses, right? Um, you have the person who's working a nine to five Monday through Friday um, and then shooting on the weekends. It's kind of like a side hustle for them. And maybe they're looking to anticipate to go full time potentially. That would be great. Um, you know, I think developing a process at that stage where you're like, hey, Tuesdays and Thursdays, babe, like, I need four hours to edit on both of those nights and nothing can come in between there. And if something does come up, I have to push to, well, I let's do the math plan. on that. Sure. You're editing four hours a week. Um, let's be honest. The first hour of any edit is a waste of time because you're ramping up. Yep. I, I think so. I think every time you start a job, you're always ramping up. You're going to reevaluate, especially if you, the longer you've been away from the project. So, you, 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 have, you do four hours a week. You should be able to do one film a month. That's probably it. That would yeah. be my anticipation. So, Because just gearing up with the creative process, like you said, it burns an hour at the very beginning to just get back into the edit bay saying, where am I in this? How was I feeling when I left off? Like, that's 12, you know, where that, are my assets? That's yeah. only 12 films. So whatever your revenue is times 12, yep. right? that's not that might be a great business it might be a bad business and by the know. way that's being like super disciplined four hours a week yeah so the reality is people don't actually take stock into okay you did 25 films 
you have 300 hours of editing, you have 52 weeks in the year, you have to at least, if you're telling me each one of these films is going to take that long, well, you can do the math. Mm -hmm. Just do the math on that. And like create a schedule based on that math. Yeah. Like, so that's why it is personal, right? Because I can tell you it should take 12, 16 hours. Well, it, maybe you're not there. Yeah. Maybe it takes you 30. Right. And you should, as a goal, try to be faster, but that's not up to me. Mm -hmm. If you get your films to people on time and they're happy, well, I guess whatever. I don't care how long it takes you. But you better budget that time. Mm -hmm. And it starts with just getting up, going to work, treat a job like it's a job before it's a job. If you're not even, like, if you want to start a small business, and you want to have a side hustle that you like, it's still a job. Yeah. But so my question to you would be, we're talking about a certain person right now, the person who's shooting maybe 10 weddings a year, editing four hours a week, whatever this person, what would you say to this person who's probably very new because they're shooting 10, uh, you know, a year? Um, what would you say to them? Who, to a person that might be like, I don't know how long it takes to edit my films. Like, what should I do about that? How do I budget if I have no idea? Well, I mean, I'll just tell you straight up. A, perfect, a person who's experienced delivering a modern standard film will take 16. So if you're not able to do it in 16 hours, then you're not there. And that's okay. But I would start with 16 and anything over that is extra. Yeah. You're, you're taking longer. And well, so some of it is like start with what someone who's really proficient does and then look at what you can actually do. I even think the, the first step is just keeping track. How many people don't even keep track of how long it's taken to edit, yeah. right? Well, like, we're getting into our process talk, so we'll save that for our processes. But I think the big thing is, is like being disciplined with your time. Mm -hmm. And uh, like, so I think part of that is, yeah, tracking your time and like setting a schedule, holding yourself to the schedule, being more bothered when you break your schedule than just like when your edit isn't good. Right. Because a lot of people are really like, really disturbed by like their films, but they're not that disturbed by their lack of discipline. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's like, if you don't want a backlog, you need to know when the, think of it this way. Are we late on our films? Not once, never. Why? Because of all the things that we mentioned. Exactly. All we yeah. just, but we've never been late. Yeah. Like we, we, you know, and, and our turnaround is faster than most people. Mm-hmm. Like I know a lot of people, and this is what I will push back on. A lot of people think it's like extra artsy fartsy to have a super long turnaround. Or like whatever, man, if you're making money, I, who cares? I don't care. But I will say like, it's the exception, not the rule. Mm -hmm. If someone is so good that they, people will wait nine months for their film, <laughs> it's you're not in the world that everyone else is going to be in. Mm -hmm. And like, by the way, if that person film finished that film faster, you can't tell me that I, I don't believe that it would actually be worse. Mm -hmm. So it's, again, it's, it's, it's a lie that, you know, taking a longer time creates a better product. You know, I, I think it's a, a, a lie that fortunately for you, your client probably believes a little bit like, mm -hmm. Oh, if you delivered within one week of the wedding, the couple might be like, oh, that didn't take a lot of time. Why did you charge me so much money? <laughs> you know, so like your couple kind of believes that a little bit. What's that sweet spot? Mm -hmm. um, like, I think in a perfect world, I would love to deliver within a month. Like that would be my perfect, you know, turnaround of like when they're expecting it slash when are they excited about it? You know, slash, when are they going to feel most nostalgic? Can about I it? beat the photographer? Can I beat the photographer? Like that's my sweet spot right there. If you beat the photographer, by the way, you're going to get your stuff shared by the planner before them. Yep. Yep. I think so. Um, so uh, the, the, the whole deal with like, Oh, I deliver six months. Like I, I don't really buy it. Like uh, people nowadays have less patience than they ever have. So six months to them is like, that's well, I think crazy. in the future, we're not going to be afforded this with TikTok. And the no. next generation of imp of customers. Yeah, yeah, it's I, eroding. For you sure. need we need to all as an industry focus on being faster and more proficient, and not focus on things yeah. that may the average person can't appreciate. Yep. So, yeah. but I would say just be disciplined. Like I said, go to work. And so what the excuses that we have for not going to work, 
are you have other things going on figure out a solution yep. and, and and like you're making a sacrifice mm -hmm. yeah if, if you're a part-time person and you're you're doing that 10 weddings a year and you're working nine to five monday through friday you are making a sacrifice you're saying hey i'm gonna make this extra money for our family but i have to do the work um, I can't go to a family outing on a random Thursday night. Like you are making that sacrifice. And don't and, complain about it. Just do it or, or quit. It's, it's what you signed up for when you got into it. And then, you know, if you are full time and, and probably this conversation goes more towards a full time person. If you're a part time person, I have so much respect for what you're doing. Like yes. you guys are crushing it. Like I can't believe God, like this is a full time job for us. We and did like, it part time for a long time. We did. We did. And it was really hard. It was hard. Mm -hmm. This was a challenge for us. Um, I think this conversation and our frustration probably is more directed at the full-time people who can't get out of their own way. <laughs> or <laughs> or like, just think like, it's not, it, like I said, they think it's a feature, not a bug. Right. And I'm like, no, this is a problem, yeah. dude. Yeah. Like, and I know for real life, it's a problem because sometimes you have to edit their films for them. Yeah. And it's like, whoa, dude, you're like, you get, you gotta, gotta go to work. <laughs> like, <laughs> yes. what are you doing? You know? And it's like, um, I think at the end of the day, we just want to impress upon you that you're in control mm -hmm. of this. You're much more, and it's always better to give a person responsibility and tell them you have the ability to affect the outcome here. Mm -hmm. It's not this out of control freight train. Yep. Now you don't have to pay the price. If you don't want to put in an extra, you don't want to work 12 extra hours a week on top of your nine to five. You don't have to pay that price. If you're a filmmaker and you've worked full time and you don't want to get up in the morning, but like imagine if you're editing at home, this is for me. I'm editing at home, I have kids, they go to school. You have to get editing done from 8.30 to three. And if that's all you do every day, uh, that's cool. Yeah. But if you're just like, du -du 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 -du, you know, like if it was me, I would edit from 8.30 to three and I would do my emails after the kids went to bed. Yep. That's how I would handle it if I was full time. I emails. wouldn't. And I would, I would take my phone calls when I was with my kids, potentially, mm -hmm. like, you know, depending on how loud your kids are, I guess. Uh, I, get I would try to. to. I, I would try. try to. I would try. And Because and you need focused time to edit. Right. The, the, the conversation of, like, going to work, it does brush up pretty closely to our second point of just, like, creating a process. I feel like we keep on wanting to get into process. Yeah, let's talk about process. Let's talk about process. So create a process. Point at, number two. Point number two, how do you hop into, you know, creating a process for yourself? I would start with um, first writing down what I'm doing. Okay. I, I would say like, well, what is my current, because everyone has a process, you know, <laughs> um, they Sometimes do. Sometimes it's a lot more unorganized. <laughs> like, like, yeah. like your process could be like, search music bed for eight hours. Okay, and then it's like, I don't know, in like whatever the process, whatever you do when you start editing, do write it down and do it based on your most favorable views of yourself mm -hmm. and what you really want to do, right? You can imagine the best wedding you edited, the perfect wedding. Then what you need to do is actually start evaluating if you're even holding to your own process and seeing where within that process. So like, for instance, let's talk about the music. One of the things I think is most inefficiently done by filmmakers is they don't have a process for making it easy for themselves to pick music. Mm -hmm. So when their downtime is happening, they're not building a backlog of songs they want to use for the year. Or when they get started, they don't even have a process. I, I, like for me, when I'm picking a song for something, uh, I go, okay, what's the vibe? okay, what are the instruments I want? So I'm like, this is just my process. Like, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go find the instruments. I might search for has build, doesn't have build. But I'm thinking, how do I want to edit this film? I don't do what some people do where they're searching for hours for a cool song. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to make the, I don't even look at every song. I look at a very specific criteria. So my process is decide the song I want from a vibe standpoint and a feels and a length standpoint before I even listen to a single song. Mm -hmm. Then I can find what I want. It's like I need something three and a half minutes long with a build that feels Latin that has uh, electronic drums. Mm -hmm. My song, by the time I start listening to songs, they're all close. Mm -hmm. That's my process. I don't know what your process is, but like some, even something like choosing music can be made into a process. And a lot of people, they're just like, scrolling and they're like don't let the job itself determine how you do it yeah i think a big 
part of your process is um, managing your time really well, like to, to kind of uh, hop onto your point um, about music, like a big part of what we do in the off season when we have less jobs is choosing music. We'll go through, we'll create these libraries on the music bed, show sponsor, by the way, um, and we'll literally drop 25, 50 new songs into libraries. Um, and so we have certain kind of vibes um, uh, of libraries every single year, but it's refreshed, it's new, it feels great. So that when summer comes along and we, we start having that backlog, which our backlog is insane over the summertime, crazy, we'll shoot 11 weddings in a weekend. Um, we have music that's already, like you said, close. And we can even go into our libraries and pick songs in literally five, 10 minutes. There's a lot of ways to do it. The point is like when you evaluate the process and you look and you go, what part, like if you go, okay, I spent eight hours picking a song. I spent right. six hours culling. I spend like all the parts about what you're doing. And then you're going, when you do it, when you track it and then you write it all down, you're going to look and go, Ooh, that's a big time waste. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so like, the first that's thing, where I would start somebody. The first it. thing is writing everything down. What are you spending time on? Boom, 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 boom. How long is it taking me for each of these things? And then also figuring out, and I would say do this in the off season too, figure out where the time waste is. In every project, until you feel like you're where you want to be, you need to keep really evaluating every project how you did mm -hmm. until you can figure out a way to solve the problem. Because if you're spending eight hours picking music, that is a problem. That is not acceptable. That is not a good use of your time. You're doing something wrong, mm -hmm. you know. And um, but what if I I'm just not feeling any of the music, Jason? Like I'm not feeling it in my I, heart. I can't even connect with that statement. <laughs> I, I don't know what that means. Like when people say those things, I'm like, well, what was your plan? It's like, like, but I'm musically literate, so I, I will say like I have a different perspective as a. But musician. I'm not, and I feel the same way. Like I, I know when I'm like, I was talking to a, 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 a groom the other day and I was able, he was like, you know, he, he just really didn't understand what he got. Cause we really only talked to the planner and he was like, are we getting a longer film? I'm like, yeah, you're getting a highlight film. This is just a teaser film. We delivered it in a week. You're welcome. Mother effer. Like <laughs> you're welcome. We delivered so fast. He was like, it was just a really fast pace. I was like, yeah, it's about 45 seconds long. That's what a teaser is. And it's going to be fast paced. And all of them have been that way. So go look at what you buy. Literally go what, look at your agreement. Like, but it's all good, whatever. And he, it, you know, it was a matter of him understanding like what he actually bought. But I was like, I broke down his music. I was like, you know, in, in the next film, like, sounds like you guys want to really emphasize, you know, certain parts of your wedding um, that were sentimental to you. I can imagine us using some strings, like a little bit more cinematic style music for your actual film itself. He was like, that's exactly what I want. Like I was able to like hear what he was feedback was and I put it in music terms immediately. Like I talked to a, the couple I'm shooting this weekend. Um, she kept talking about certain musical things about the day. So I got a sense and I said, you know, do you want something crazy over the top? Like reggaeton, like for your dance. It like, and it was like, Oh yeah. That would like, I already got permission to take a creative risk. Mm -hmm. So like I'm already in the process of my um, consultation. I'm working on my editing. Right. Right. By the questions like, so that I want your goal guys is to sit down and edit and have as very few decisions as possible. Right. That's a great way to put it. He's like, you don't like, there's a real thing called decision fatigue. Yeah. And there's a, it's like the reason behind like guys like that are mega performers who wear the same outfit every day. Yep. Is they don't want to put in decisions that don't actually fundamentally affect the product in a better way. How often do you go to a restaurant and you look at a, a 12 page menu and you're like, ugh, what? And then you just go and like burger. It's going to take forever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you just give up. Um, as opposed to a lot of really successful restaurants and this is kitchen nightmares, right? Put like 12 things on your menu. Like, and, and people will order faster and they'll get out of your restaurant. Limiting faster. decisions, making sure all the ingredients are quality. Yep. Like that's the same thing with same making thing. a wedding, a process. So right. I think that's part of it is actually evaluating what is my process and where is the waste. Yep. And then I think the other part is, is like, um, you know, I was thinking to try to like, how do we say this? Cause it's kind of, it's like getting better at <laughs> things. Well, I was going to say that too. Like, like, 
understanding your craft more um, definitely dictates how your process is. And but that just comes with reps, yes. right? That's what I think the big thing is, is like knowing that when you put a process together, that it's going to, if you just stick with the process, you'll just get better and better and better at that. And keeping that as part of your thing of like your plan, because one of the things I see a lot of people do is they have such a tiny sample size when they make changes. They don't try something long enough to actually get good at it. Right. And be able to actually measure if they're getting faster. Like that, that's your whole point is like, do the same thing the same way over and over and over and over again and see how much faster you're getting, see how your process is being changed when you're getting faster. And then you can actually make decisions that help your process. I would recommend to people that they edit the exact same way for an entire season, unless something glaring happens where there's a major problem. But if it's just one of those nagging, like I want to get better or make better work, I want to elevate my brand. I don't think you should do that from film to film to film, even though it'll naturally just kind of happen. I think what you should do is edit the film as long as the customer is happy, if the client is happy, and then look at your body of work. Mm -hmm. It's like the difference between like an album and a single. Mm -hmm. It's like an album feels different than a single. And if you look at an album, like 10 weddings, 20, 25 weddings, and at the end of the year you evaluate, you're going to walk away with a different impression than if you look at a film and then change the next film and then change the next film and then change it. It's like what within the context of that you're dealing with so many different types of weddings and different quality, like terrible days, terrible planners, photographers that were annoying, couples that were terrible to work with. You can't make adjustments like that. And a lot of people just don't. This is like know your process, evaluate your waste, and then like create – repetition and just give yourself enough time. And then I think the last thing which is related is, you know, evaluate it every single off season, actually evaluating like that. You can get into the creative, like watching the, I mean, we do this every year, right, Jared? We sit down with our films. We, we say, okay, here's a best example of this type of work we do. Mm-hmm. We, 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 and we can get really into it. Like we say we have these coastal new England type weddings. We have mountain weddings, New England mountain weddings. We have city weddings. And then there's other in between. But those are the three, maybe I would even put into quality like palatial kind of mansion type weddings. And we, of course, do some. Estates. Yeah, yeah, estate weddings. And and like they all have their own kind of vibe. Mm -hmm. And so whatever your vibe is, maybe you say barn weddings, maybe you say, I don't know, Cancun weddings. But. Create, man, sir. create yeah. a little category yep. of the types of films you end up having to make, the types of couples you end up working with, types of days you work, and then pick a couple of the best examples and watch those films and, and start to say, what could I have done differently or better? You'll shoot it differently next year. Magically, you'll edit it differently because you'll have more of a sense of what you wanted to accomplish. And I feel like that's okay. I know for everyone, some people are like, they want to reserve the right to constantly change things on the fly. It's your business. Do it how you want. If you want to crush your backlog, don't do that to yourself. That's all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's tough because we're creatives. We want to create something that's different every single time. And every once in a while, you'll see people post on social media and be like, I want to do things different. And you're like, how long have you been doing this? And they're like six months. <laughs> and you're like, yeah. Okay, Every uh, single film is different right. at that uh, point. Okay. <laughs> so. uh, um, but like you look at someone, you know, um, Henry, you look at someone like Alex, you see their films and it's like different themes, every single film. Right. And so the newbie thinks that they have to run their business that way. Not understanding that the reason why, Alex can charge what he charges. Um, The reason why, you know, people are are at the top of their um, craft and industry um, is because they have the discipline and just have the skill and are doing way less volume. So they can, they can spend more time. But also they have a through line in their work that it doesn't change. So like, there's like a consistency, even if they're like, a little out, out there. Yep. Like if you talk to them about what their values are and the type of film they want to make, right. there's like a consistency. 
Right. Like I, for me, this is how I want to portray X, Y, and Z. And that bleeds into the editing right. because they know what they want out of the edit. Right. I, and if you're agree. new, you don't know that. I would agree. Take, take like, we always talk about Alex. We love Alex. Um, but take some of his, you know, work. Like I think about his like French film in Paris with a couple that Ooh. wasn't really comfortable in front of the camera and then put pair that next to his breakers film or Italy or Italy or even like a celebrity wedding, like, um, the, uh, JJ Watt wedding. Yeah. Like the, the themes that are the same are going to be like, you always see certain shots of the ballroom. Like he's always shooting the same exact shots over and over again. It's very similar style. Well, of shooting. It's just, even if it's a different shot, the communication is there. He's always communicating certain things right in the films like this is a part and part of the day this this is for the planner yep. this is how i tell stories yep. this is how i want to he, he said like a term i use sometimes which i it was the mutual vulnerability mm -hmm. so how does he, that's how he wants to portray the couples mm -hmm. and like so there's like a sense that goes now given this takes time and whatever yep. but we're just bringing it up because it seems like well and then the last point i was gonna say about processes is like get a project management software it seems like that's where you end is like software evaluating writing mm -hmm. blah, blah 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 no the deeper stuff is what are my themes like what is my how do i portray things like you said the types of shots that you're putting in there yeah how do i we do that all the time like this well, is how we want to shoot a table yeah it, it's that classic thing of like you have to know the rules before you can break them like mm -hmm. he knows his rules and then from there he's able to um create some differences in each film that just stand out mm -hmm. much more because he's able to be like, I'm going to do a separate shoot with this couple that. Or there might just be certain couples that are ever, you're not going to have all perfect couples, but every so often your process will align perfectly with a wedding day. Right. right. And that's your big, that's right. your showpiece. And, and I would just say most people aren't at that point. No, you have to figure out the basics of your process. Like most people just do not have a process. And I would just say it doesn't come together randomly when you're first starting. You're not like all these people are just going to be put together randomly and I'm going to create this awesome, amazing film. Like, no, you have to understand your process from reps, from having. Well, uh, process tells you when I'm done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It lets you know when you're done. And a lot of people, the biggest struggle they have is they don't know when they're done. Because they don't know what they're trying to accomplish. They don't know what the film is. They yeah. don't know what their standards are. They don't know yep. what is this stuff. And so the last thing I was going to mention is, you know, you're going to work. We talked about the last point. You're getting there. You're, you're evaluating your process and you know where the problems are. Yep. Um, you need to have a project management software. It doesn't have to be crazy. Asana's free. Trello board's free. But just kind of keep part of your process should be a documented even if it's just edit highlight and you have that 12 times in a mm -hmm. Trello board, yep. but just like having something that holds you accountable, yep. I think, and also maybe breaking it down to whatever works for you. Like we, we can have another podcast about how to use project management software, yep. project management software within the context of wedding filmmaking. But I will say, I do find that to be very helpful. I don't know how someone could reasonably maintain any kind of like velocity consistently in editing without a tool. This is your equivalent of creating a list on a piece of paper, on a notebook and checking the list off. Like how satisfying is that yeah. when you're, when you're going through and, and it, for me, when I create a list at the end of the day, I'm like, I checked off everything on my list today. Great. I usually only write like four to five things down so I can actually accomplish those things. Do podcast, you know, set up, you know, for the weekend. Like, um, well, you got to know when you're done. Like you, you were have saying. to know when you're done. Yeah. And you have to create that into like that sense of satisfaction. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is, is you checked off that list and that film still doesn't feel good. That's a great moment for you to ask a question. Why is my process wrong? Should I be am amplifying this process so that next time I do X, Y, and Z, or is this a unique situation and the film is never going to be what I want? Mm -hmm. Either way, you're learning something. Mm -hmm. And it's like, Yep. But a pr only when you know what the baseline is. So when people, those of you that don't like rules and don't like the idea of like creativity encroaching on your freedom, it won't. It won't. Like you can make it as loose or as tight as you want and you get to make the decision ultimately. Mm -hmm. But at least know. 
when I'm doing something that's, oh, well, it took me longer because every time I hit the dumb point, I checked off my list. I spent another 20 hours on the film. Yep. So, yep. Anyway. Um, let's go to point number three, which is have the right tools, which is another Jason point. Um, what do we mean when we say have the right tools? Um, this is a very linear, simple point, which is, you got to have the tools that you need to actually be efficient. And usually for most in editing, you're talking computers, hard drives, um, and not just hard drives, but the right connection points to your hard drives, like making sure that system is tight so that your editing systems can operate. And I'll say it this way. If you're editing, my, my goal with editing is I don't want to think about any technology. Like if I'm thinking about the technology I'm using, that means I'm not creating it it's like Apple always like has a basic philosophy that like if I'm using something, it should disappear. Mm -hmm. It should be like, it's only me. It's like, I'm in my own world. I'm not thinking about the computer. I'm not thinking about all that stuff. If you find yourself consistently planning around the limitations of your gear, this is a backlog problem. This, you cannot crush your backlog if your gear is adding 10, 20 hours to your process. And I'll, I'll give a very real world example. The other day, uh, Max Smith was asking me for something, so I had to actually find a product that I mentioned before. And I'll say it again. <laughs> I love Max. He's a great guy. Um, it's a card reader from StarTech. It's a six, this thing's awesome by the way, six bay or six star, six port. For mm -hmm. SD cards? I don't know. We mostly use SD cards. So it has six SD card slots. And um, it's Thunderbolt 3. And it's awesome. And the week before, we didn't have it. Because I ordered one, and then I had sent one to another one of our filmmakers. And so we were kind of in between card readers. And it took us. We only had two weddings that day, and it took all day to do the card capture. Well, that's not our process. Our normal process is we capture six cards at a time. And we do, every wedding I think is about 30, 40 minutes. We'll do six weddings in like three or four hours on ingest. It was gonna take, if we had eight to 10 weddings with that process, it would probably, I don't know if we could even do it in a day. So I did the math and I was like, this card reader alone is saving me six to eight hours a week. That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. That's like, so during our main season, it's probably saving us 180, 200 hours on the year. Mm -hmm. Um, take those problems and look at your own business and yeah. say like, what is the bottleneck if, if just you're getting to work? If your edit and you know, we just talked about how long do our edits take for a highlight film, 12 hours, if it's saving you 120, that's 10 films that you of can, editing that yes. we saved. <laughs> like, we can, we can make an extra 40 to 50 grand with those 10 hours mm -hmm. or with those 200 hours. I mean. Yeah. We are totally glorifying this card reader right now. <laughs> We're an ad for this card reader. Well, it's about, but, I, it's, yeah. it's only like 180 bucks. So yeah. I don't know why anyone wouldn't buy this. Right. But, but that being said, um, well, actually, it's kind of a pain to find. So that's why you wouldn't buy it. But, yeah. but regardless, I think that's a good real world example yeah. of like your equipment shouldn't be that much of a limitation. And I'm not right. saying that you need to go buy like an $18,000 supercomputer. And there's always going to be something about this job where you're waiting for technology. Mm -hmm. So, but, but within reason. Right. And, and, and like, I just think about like, again, going back to the examples of, of the person who's editing, you know, four hours a week, when you're editing, you want to be editing. You don't want to be waiting for your, your files to be rendering. You don't want to have a, if you have a slow laptop, like the way my brain works is if my computer is slow, I'm slow because I'm waiting, I'm waiting. It's not happening on my computer. I'm waiting for something to load. I'm, somewhere else already distract like i'm super distracted like i'm i have adhd so it's just like i'm all over the place Anyways. i can't get i can't get work done if my computer's giving me issues yeah it's you're out of the frame of mind so it's like having the right gear and you know i'm very sensitive and, and understanding of people that are just like i am only shooting 10 weddings a year i don't have the money to be able to invest but everyone's just, been there in that place yes. in their career but understanding because you have all these people that are like gear doesn't matter and probably more on the shooting side people always say like gear doesn't matter what camera you have you know and we would probably be the counterweight and say well like, let me depends well no <laughs> depends. let's just pause even with cameras yeah 
if you're shooting Sony, you're shooting a super heavy codec. That H.265 codec, it's heavy. It takes a lot in post. It's much more likely to crash your computer or have issues than maybe a, a ProRes codec. <clears throat> Premiere. <clears throat> or just anything that you're using because H.265 is heavy. Yeah. So, like, if you don't have the right computer, then even shooting Sony might be a bad decision if it ends up taking you so long to edit in post because your computer can't handle the files. Right. So, like, this all actually matters. Like, oh, can I shoot 4K? Can I shoot 12-bit or 10-bit? Can I shoot rock? Like, the gear, all it, it all factors in. It's like, okay, well, what would be the reasons? Well, this is the best possible file. Great. We all know that shooting raw 12-bit whatever would be the best looking. We don't do that. We make those calculations already. We make decisions based on how much card space we have that we can reliably bring to weddings. We make decisions based on battery usage that maybe a certain codec might have. Or You're already doing this stuff. You're already realizing that gear sets a lot of your limitations and times. Start thinking about it in post too though. And realizing like, if I don't get the right computer to edit this Sony footage, I'm not gonna get the most out of the Sony footage. Yeah. And like, even like, okay, am I creating proxies? Do I have to create proxies for every wedding? How long does that take? Can it get done overnight? Is it constantly failing because my computer crashes? Or is it good? Do I mind? All these things. That affects your backlog. When every wedding you have to spend four hours transcoding proxies. Right. That's fine. Especially if you have a process. Mm -hmm. This is why you got to go to work and follow your process because your process might be go to work, ingest my footage, maybe do emails on the day you're doing transcoding because your computer's taken up. You're being the most efficient with your time. You know, or whatever. Do transcoding at four. Go be with your kids. The next morning, it'll be ready. Don't go to work, though, like, and then, like, be like, oh, sorry. Like, first of all, please don't do transcoding at eight in the morning and just sit there for four hours. <laughs> don't do that. But also, like, realizing, like, man, if this would do it two hours faster, I could be editing. It, there's a real-time effect to this. And, and I don't really know the best thing to tell someone if they – I guess I would just say, just acknowledge that it, your stuff sucks if it does suck. And the next year when you're making money, realizing if you really want to make money and you want to have some freedom with this job, you have to take more of the money and put it back into the business yep. than keep. It's a gradual burn and it really never ends. And we're not even talking about like having like gear acquisition syndrome, like not which we certainly have, but like we just built this whole studio. We have lights, we have cameras, we have microphones, we have everything that uh, allows us to just literally walk into the studio, flip the lights on, turn the cameras on, put a battery in, and we're flying. Well, the question is like, because how YouTube, much time does that save? With Wedding Film School and YouTube, like, do I have time to make a video? No. Yes. Well, I do. I have time <laughs> to like shoot a little video. Sure. Do I have time to set up the gear every time? Like, how many more videos could I, how much more content could I make for our YouTube audience if? I was more creating and less setting up. Right. And I think a lot of people have the same issues. It's like, oh, I can't be creative. And I really, really feel this way. A lot of people think they're having a, they're hitting a creative rut, but really their own gears pulling them out of the creative process mm -hmm. because it's constantly waking them up to the fact that everything they have sucks or they're waiting. And like, if they would just be going, they would probably not overthink things as much because they wouldn't have as much downtime mm -hmm. <laughs> and they would feel better about what they did. And a lot of people feel bad about like the waiting, They're like, nah, and it's waiting, it's crashing. Like I've edited things where like the project gets corrupt. I have great equipment by the way. And so it's not the equipment, it's just something that happens. And I know how frustrating that is and how it screws up my edits so bad when I'm like editing and just keeps crashing. Yeah. It's like, I don't want to work on this anymore. Yeah. It just kills a creative process. Yep. And it's like, you're a human being. So you need to make sure your stuff is inspiring and it's helping you get the job done and it's not adding artificial limitations to the process. And, you know, I, I, I'm not going to give you pointers on how to get better stuff. That's not the point of this. But I will say, like, you will have backlog problems if your equipment is causing delays. Mm-hmm. So yep. the only solution is get better stuff. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So let's dive into the the half point that the we have at the point. end. And I, I like the half point at the end because um, it kind of ties everything together too. It's like 
um, you know, go to work, create a process, have the right tools, work hard. Work hard is like an obvious, like, yeah, crush my backlog by working harder. I think work hard kind of has like this uh, negative connotation as well, especially in our industry of like people that are just like, oh, life work balance, man. What would you say to the, that person in that kind of argument here? You know, people have a very modern viewpoint of this, not based on most of history, as all things are. And the illusion of the progress of history is a real thing. Everyone thinks everything's always better, better, better. And the real reality is, it's like we work we don't work as hard as other people used to work in modern. So I've never understood the fascination. Like I literally, when you talk to some people about their jobs, you would think that they have like this boss that's yelling at them. Every, like, like Ebenezer Scrooge trying to get you to skip Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> it's like your, that's not reality. Like, and, and so like, I just don't buy it most of the time. Like, cause it always goes like this. Like it's, it's an unfalsifiable argument people make where they go like, they're like, yeah, you know, you just got to work harder. Why? Well, I, I am not going to be putting my family second. Right. And I'm like, I could go at you at 20 different arguments about this <laughs> because it's like, so you think putting, paying for your kid's college is putting your family second. Like most of history, people who did their jobs, did their jobs for their families. So by working hard for your families, like, you don't like, do you think my kid needs to spend more than an hour a day with me? She does not <laughs> like, like in, in like sometimes. And if you never give them the, like, don't get it, become an extremist. It is an excuse for your just laziness. Right. And like, you can't live in a fantasy world where you just don't have to work hard to become successful. Mm -hmm. If you want to be successful, like, and I'll say it more like this. Fine. Have whatever reality you want to have where you're freaking like traveling 26 weeks out of the year. And you can have that reality. I don't care about what you want to do. doesn't matter to me. What I will do is if you're my competitor, I will take the fact that you are not working and I will be working and I will eat your lunch. And someone will eat your lunch. And so I don't really care what you want to do, but just be real, be realistic that you're actually, everything they do, there's a price to pay. There's a price to pay. And so like, if you want all this free time, you're not going to make, you, you know, and like, by the way, some people build their business to the point where they get to have all that stuff. Mm -hmm. That's a great thing. I'm not opposed. I don't care if you work one hour a week, if you get all your work done, that'd be amazing. Right. That'd, that'd be great. But like, you're not being abused. Right by having to work 40, 50, 60 hours sometimes on your job. Right. And like, you might have to, to have what you want. And like a good key indicator on something that will make you success is whenever you hear a lot of people saying, take your foot off the gas, that's a great opportunity to put your foot on the gas. Mm -hmm. Like we did the same thing with the knot. Yep. Over COVID. So dumb. Not so dumb. Like what I tell you years ago, I'm like, all these people think it's dumb. That makes me want to advertise on it. Yeah. Because I know they're going to be gone. Yeah. And like all your friends are taking 70 hours, six month turnarounds. And doing... when, 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 uh, when they were offering discounts over COVID, we were like, all right, we'll throw more money into it because I mean, next year is only a year away. We're likely going to be shooting weddings next year. So <laughs> all these people are leaving the knot. Our advertising is just going to go way up. Yeah. And it's just the same thing as like if other people don't want to work hard and they all want to take 30 weeks a year traveling to Costa Rica and then you know that their time, their turnaround is going to suck. Their customer experience is going to suck all this junk. You have an opportunity to claim that hole in the market. And so it's like, yeah, you don't want to have a backlog. Quit being lazy. Mm -hmm. Get off your butt, show up to work and just finish. Like that's probably your big problem is that you just literally can't finish your work. Yeah. And, and this applies in so many different ways. It's not just when we say work hard, I think you and I are not talking about saying work more hours necessarily. Sometimes, but, but you have to be willing to, you're the owner. Be willing to, of course. But when you're working, you're working freaking hard. And then when you have downtime and when you're with your family, being intentional. Like I think a big part That's of the working most important hard thing. is, yeah, is the, the biggest part about working hard is just being super intentional, Focused. not being distracted, going after it.
working hard, getting being incredibly there. personally honest yep. about what you're actually doing when you're supposedly at work. Yep. That's probably the biggest thing. Most people, they would fix other problems by that. Every so often, you might have to put in extra time. Yep. But in general, I don't put in a ton of extra time. I go to work nine to five. I'm willing to go later. There are times I go later, but in general, because we have our ducks in a row, it actually affords more free time, more of what people yep. actually say they want would happen if they were actually willing to be more disciplined and do, I think the things that people are telling them like real artists don't do, it's like, well, okay, maybe I don't want to be an artist. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like anyway, yeah. yeah, work hard, have, it's a character thing, yeah. but also it'll give you freedom. Yep. So hopefully guys, this has been, um, enlightening to you. Hopefully it's been challenging to you. Hopefully it's been, you've taken a couple things away into your own, uh, personal backlog, uh, process to, um, yeah, get better, become faster. And hopefully by the time December, January, February rolls around, you're in a better spot. And by the way, year. we know this isn't like an editing tutorial on killing your backlog. There are editing things you can do that will make it faster processes. We're talking high level. Yeah. So. And by the way, I mean, now that we are in our new studio and we're setting everything up, one of the things that we do plan to do is do some more editing tutorials ourselves. Live editing. So, live editing. The Wedding Film School show, uh, or WFS Live, is going to be happening probably in the next few weeks. We're probably mm -hmm. going to be starting that up again. Live editing, I'm probably going to start in July. July. So Maybe June, but um, I think just at the end of the day, like, you want to get more into that side yep. of like, okay, let me see the process. I get right. it. A lot of you need to see stuff. And so we're, we're going to try to do that for you. Yep. We're more it's talking. very time consuming, uh, but I think we're committed and we're here. We have the, the studios to be able to do it now. Uh, this is our podcasting room. We have another uh, room that we're going to be regularly filming gear and editing in. So there's a lot of content that's going to be coming out this summer. Uh, we do have a couple um, uh, behind the scenes. Uh, that are coming out shortly as well. We've been saying that they're coming out shortly for a while. I got a bit of an interruption <laughs> yeah. in the move. but Interruption, um, well, yeah, moving in here. But those will be coming out soon, so um, those generally do pretty well. Seems pe like people are really interested in those. We have more that we're going to film this summer as well. Uh, lots going on here, guys. Check out the Facebook group if you have questions from the community. Um, that's a great spot to ask questions. Um, Jason is regularly doing coaching sessions. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? We've, I if we've you really about have listened to this podcast and said, I wish they told me this. Um, one of the good ways to get what you want is get a coaching session. Um, what I like to do is evaluate your, like for, for something like this. I would say, let's evaluate your process. Let's talk about what you're doing, what you're not doing, where the holdups are. A lot of this stuff is very personal. Um, it doesn't, you try to, we try to speak generally and give people things that work for most people. But at the end of the day, the re reality is most people need that. You know, everyone has an individual issues and things that happen within the context of their lives or their creative process. So we wanted to create an opportunity for people to have more of that kind of level of education and coaching. So if you would like that at our wedding film dot school forward slash coaching, small fee, um, limited availability but we wanted to at least make it available yep accelerate your growth through a coaching session there's a lot of things that are just essentially like a dam in your own process that if someone like jason is actually really good at just knocking those barriers down so that you can accelerate the growth of your business no faster. excuses i'm yep. gonna knock your excuses out <laughs> uh guys thank you for listening to this episode hopefully you have a great week and we'll see you in a couple weeks